Now let's move on to the PCY algorithm, which is an improvement to the a priori algorithm. One key observation is that in pass one of the a priori algorithm, most memory is actually idle. We can see that we store only the individual item counts here and a lot of memory is actually left unused. So can we use this idle memory to reduce the memory required in pass two? And one idea is that in addition to the item counts, we can maintain a hash table with as many buckets as fit in the memory. Basically, we will keep a count for each bucket into which the pair of items are hashed. Note that in here, each bucket actually corresponds to several pairs of items. And the value of each bucket is the sum of the total counts of all these pairs of items. So for each bucket, we only keep the count, but not the actual pairs that's hashed to the bucket. Another problem to keep in mind is that this hash function should be deterministic. And more concretely, for each bucket, we will do the following things. And in each item of the basket, we will add one to the item count, and this has already been discussed in the a priori algorithm. And what's new in this PCY algorithm is that for each pair of the items, we will just hash the pair into a bucket and we will add one to the count for that bucket. A few things to know are that for one, the pairs of items need to be generated from the input file on the fly, and then they're not already present in the file. And the second thing, is that we're not just interested in the present of a pair, but we also need to see whether it's present at least as times, where as is the support threshold. Of course, if it's not present at all, then we don't need to count it in the second pass. This is already some form of optimization to the algorithm, but what's even better is that if we know that it's not present at least as times, we can also eliminate this item pair from the second pass. And one observation for why, it, why this hash table is useful is that if the bucket contains a frequent pair, then the bucket is surely frequent. However, even without any frequent pair, because a lot of, a lot of pair can be hashed into one bucket and the bucket would Remember that the bucket will store the sum of the counts. So basically, there is still a chance that the bucket can still be frequent. So in this case, we cannot use the hash value to eliminate any member of a frequent bucket. And this is the case where a bucket has a total count larger than S. But in the opposite, if this bucket happens to have a total count less than S, then none of this pair can be frequent. And this is exactly what we want. And for these pairs, we can just eliminate them in the second pass. And of course, the second pass, we can only need to count pairs that hash to the frequent bucket. And you may have noticed that in this first pass, some of the memory are used to count the individual items and all the other memory we have used up to store this hash table. So how do we reserve memory for the second pass? One idea, of course, is to replace the bucket by a bit vector, because we only care about how, whether or not this bucket is frequent, right? So we only need one bit to store this information. And one means the bucket count exceeds the support and zero means that it did not. So in this way, we can reduce the memory usage from four byte per bucket to one bit per bucket. So basically we will only need one over 32 of the whole memory and we can use the memory that's saved to do our second pass. And of course we still need to uh, decide which items are frequent and list them for the second pass. So basically this blue box here will also be shrunk by a little bit and this is a picture illustrating the memory usage for both passes. 
In the first pass, we will have one block of a memory used to count the individual items and all the rest of the memory will be used to uh, store the hash table. And in the second pass, we will basically distill this large chunk of memory to keep only the frequent items. And the hash table will also be compressed into a bitmap. And we can use the rest of the memory to count the candidate pairs. As you can see in the second pass, we only need to count all the pairs that meet the conditions for being a candidate pair. And we have two conditions. The first one is as in the a priori algorithm, both i and j are frequent items. Hmm. And the second condition is that the pair ij need to be hashed into a bucket whose bit in the bit vector is one. So this must be a frequent bucket. And both conditions are actually necessary for the pair to have a chance of being frequent. 